with an AEW star attacked by a fan and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Mentioning the idea of taking part in a cage match for WWE, Trish Stratus told TVA Sports, Imprison me in a cage. I've never had a cage match, and it doesn't matter what kind of cage. The one without the roof, a hell in a cell, or an elimination chamber. There were so many things we weren't allowed to do back then. I remember being hit with a chair once, and everyone was freaking out. And I was like, my goodness, can you just hit me with a chair? So now I want a cage. Speaking about Brian Pillman Jr. no longer being with AEW, Jim Cornette said this on his drive through podcast. It's about time, and I'd wish they'd done it sooner, because it's been obvious for, what, how long? That they weren't going to do anything with him. He was not going to be featured on any of the television programs. We don't know what they did on YouTube, but we've also heard that the YouTube matches were just, you know, just rapid-fire matches. Just, you know, three minutes with green guys against green guys. He wasn't learning anything. They had a period of time, there was a window there, he had sympathy, remember? He had people kind of behind him. We saw him a few times on TV and he didn't do anything. He wasn't allowed to do anything remarkable or memorable. And then you didn't see him anymore and that window closed. On his Storytime podcast, Dutch Mantel said this about LA Knight being one of the top merch sellers for WWE. They look at merchandise sales. This guy is number one. This female wrestler is number two, number three, and so on. No longer that he's been there. He's already number four in merchandise sales. He was number four in losing matches. He lost five or six in a row. But it doesn't matter because the fans are telling the promotion, listen, we'll support this guy if you put him in something. And if you put him in something now, what's that tell WWE? Oh, if we make him more high profile, more merch merchandise will sell. I want to commend him in doing a great job. With her returning to work for WWE as a backstage correspondent following the passing of her father, Sarah Schreiber wrote on Twitter that since I was a kid performing has always been my outlet and my happy place. Now, during one of the most difficult times of my life, when I needed it most, it was there. Thank you, WWE Universe, for this weekend. When it comes to plans for Raw tonight, Dave Meltzer mentioned that the match between Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes could be made official for SummerSlam, noting on Wrestling Observer Radio. Oh yeah, they're going to set up that match, maybe even the stipulation. PW Insider would add yesterday that Brock Lesnar has already been spotted in Alabama ahead of tomorrow's Raw. Lesnar will respond to Cody Rhodes' challenge for a SummerSlam match. As it was hinted that Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits could come together as a group, it was said on Wrestling Observer Radio that Bobby Lashley and Street Profits are apparently starting a new faction. When Wrestling World CC asked on Twitter, who else would like to see added to Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits' potential faction? The wife of Cedric Alexander, who was in Lashley's previous stable, wrote, The originators who carry the pandemic. Giving a health update on Mercedes Monet, who has been out of action with an injury, it was said on Wrestling Observer Radio that, so, she has been quiet about everything. She was at the Impact Wrestling Slammiversary pay-per-view. I know she still had crutches, and she had a walking boot on, so the presumption is that she had surgery, but she is still on crutches. We haven't heard anything about a timetable. Obviously, the plan when she's ready to go is to wrestle Julia, who won the NJPW Strong Women's Championship from Willow Nightingale. As Grayson Waller has called out The Rock, this was said about this match possibly taking place in WWE, with Dave Meltzer noting on Wrestling Observer Radio that if Rock's doing this, he's doing it to put Grayson Waller over, obviously. If he's doing this, then he's doing this for a reason. Maybe he's gonna show up soon. They sure talked about it a lot. Maybe they talked about it because it's Dwayne Johnson? Steve Carey of Ringside News added that Grayson Waller threw shade at The Rock during SmackDown. This raised a lot of attention. We are told that there is no current plan for Grayson Waller versus is The Rock. That being said, Rock is hurting for positive publicity, so there may be something in the works.
Previously, Rick Steiner was accused of making transphobic remarks to Gazelle Shaw. Now, WrestleCon, where this incident took place, has mentioned that Steiner offered an apology, saying in a statement, I'm going to address the Rick Steiner issue here instead of responding to every post. I hope everyone takes the time to read, but I also understand if you choose not to hear another side. Rick made completely inappropriate remarks to Gazelle Shaw at our event in Los Angeles. As soon as we were made aware of what happened, we swiftly addressed the issue, but we never shared details of what happened at the event. In hindsight, it was probably a mistake not to share more details during or immediately after the event concluded. I take full responsibility. My wife died three weeks after the LA show at the age of 46 after a long battle with cancer, and I made a lot of mistakes during that time. However, at no time then or after do we condone the remarks Rick made at LA. We did not fail to act after we were notified, and as a result, we removed him from the convention for the duration of that event. Rick's poor decision forever impacted his brand, relationships within the wrestling community, and alienated many of his fans. One of the positive things Rick did, and it was not publicized, is immediately apologize. He apologized to members of the WrestleCon staff, he apologized to many of his fellow wrestlers and offered apologies to the members of Impact Wrestling staff that chose to hear from him at a private mediated event. Gazelle chose not to attend Rick's apology, which we 100% understood, supported, and still support to this day. She had no obligation to hear anything from Rick, nor should she feel obligated to accept any apology from him then or now. Now that we are three months beyond this event, I feel that Rick learned a lot from his huge mistake. I know it's easier to cancel people when they make mistakes than to forgive and help educate. However, sometimes I think it's important that we give people a second chance. That being said, Rick will forever be on a zero tolerance scale moving forward at any of our events. If we are proven wrong that he has not learned from his mistakes, we will enforce a permanent ban. That is not to imply that everyone gets one free strike. We continue to strive to have an environment where everyone feels safe and included. If we are faced with issues that compromise that environment, we will take all necessary action. After returning to Impact Wrestling in April, it appears that Nick Aldis has left with Ringside News writing. According to a report behind PW Insider's paywall, Nick Aldis has parted ways with Impact Wrestling. Aldis's time with the promotion seems to have come to an end after a very short stint, which culminated in him losing to Impact World Champion Alex Shelley at Slammiversary. Aldis was under a short-term deal with the company, despite the fact that WWE was interested in signing him. With Bailey appearing to have been injured at a recent house show, PW Insider would give more details on the situation, noting that WWE's Bailey suffered what appeared to be a knee injury at tonight's WWE live event in Salisbury, Maryland tonight. Bailey's match against Charlotte Flair and Asuka was halted as she was assisted from the ring by WWE officials. PWInsider.com has been told by WWE sources that this was not a worked spot and is a legitimate situation. Bailey could also be seen leaving the arena, walking on her own with a limp. Here's the video. Yeah, it's kind of good, yeah. Hey, Bailey. Hope you feel better. Free hugs. Free hugs. Uh -huh. A hug makes it better. Yeah. Make it better. There's, the white, there's the white truck coming. Hope you feel better, Bailey. Hope you do better, Bailey. Come here. Following the match between Kenny Omega and Vikingo for AAA, a press conference would be held where Don Callis and Takeshita attacked Omega. A fan would attempt to take down Callis. Here's the clip. What are they? Hey, Kenny. What's going on? You lost again? You lost again? That's five losses in a row. You're 0-5 since I left you. What the fuck are you doing here, It's dog? okay. It was a great effort. You almost won. And you know, if you if you beg me, if you beg me and cry, I might consider, if you crawled on your hands and knees, I might consider helping you. How many more matches are you going to lose before you hang it up? Before you're fully exposed and I'm the one okay. who gave you everything you've ever had. Yeah, I think we're done here. You are such a loser I that I think I can. Get him! Get him! Get him! No, 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 no! What's going on?
yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Can you okay? Copy, copy. Jesus Christ. Where is he? Get up! Get up! Hey, get the gun! No, no, no! What, Conan? Hey! Conan! Oh, no, 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 no! Hey, yeah, 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 yeah! Brian Alvarez noted on Twitter that Don Callis was just legitimately attacked by a fan at a post-show press conference following the Omega vs. Vikingo match. It would be added on Wrestling Observer Radio that everything was an angle up to that point, but then a fan who was apparently upset about what Don had said to Kenny jumped Don from behind, ripped his suit, concussed his eardrum, and busted open his mouth while he was trying to choke out Don from behind. Don was screaming profanities at the fan before he was pulled off and was said to be livid afterwards. Don Callis is okay. He got got hurt, but he's okay. I don't think he has any major injuries, nothing that's going to keep him from being at Blood and Guts in Boston on Wednesday. Based on what I last heard today was that he's hurt, but okay. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.